Today I'm going to show you how to set up the two-player Shadow the Hedgehog mod version 2.4, which was released on 2025-03-17. All the steps shown here are on the main page readme. The first thing we need to do is make sure that you have the correct ROM. Only the NTSCU GameCube version is supported. I show you which hashes are expected. If you're like me and you convert all of your ISOs to RVZ to save on space, you need to convert it back to ISO before you can apply the patch. I will demonstrate this using Dolphin. This is a fresh Dolphin that I just downloaded. I'm going to configure it as I want and choose where I have my game stored. In this case, I put it on my desktop. This is an RVZ file. You can see it if I right click and go to properties. Even in RVZ format, you can still go to the Verify tab and push Verify Integrity here, and we should be able to see whether the CRC32 and the SHA-1 match. So we know this is the correct version of the game that I can patch. We need to convert it to ISO now. Right click and choose Convert File. It should already default to ISO. I'm going to save it in the same area where I had my RVZ. Now that I've converted my ROM back to ISO, I'm going to resume the patch steps. We need to download the latest release of the mod, in this case version 2.4. On the page, scroll down to the assets. There's only one file to download. This contains all the different variants. Go ahead and extract it. Open this folder. In here, I have a quick link to the xdelta patch we're going to use. So in here, I'm going to choose the source file, in this case, goop8p ISO. That's the original Shadow That Check ISO. And I'm going to choose the patch file. And this is going to be in the thing that we just extracted. In the patches folder, since we're going to use Dolphin, we use this if we want widescreen, or we use this if we want to use the original 4x3 aspect ratio. If you're going to be building this for Nintendo and to play it on a real console, then you either want to use this one or this one. I'm going to build the widescreen one for sure. Nothing is actually uploaded. This is all client side. All right, it looks like it finished. I'm going to go ahead and rename this to the same name as the X Delta I had, just for my own convenience. So we use this one, so I'm going to name that as the ISO name. Now I'm going to move it to my desktop. I'm going to go back to Dolphin now, reopen it. And if it worked properly, you should see this banner, and you should see the size right here, 1.34, or something around that. It'll be different depending on which variant you use. If it's not showing up correctly and the banner's on up here, you can go to U and Purge Gameless Cache. And now it should show up correctly. If it doesn't show up correctly, then something went wrong with the patch process. Since we're done patching, I'm going to delete the ISO format of the game, since I plan to just use my RVZ as storage. To make sure the patch was truly successful, we can right-click our patched ISO and go to Properties and the Verify tab. We want to make sure the variant matches the expected table here. I use the 64M widescreen, so I should expect to see these match. And they do. So I can be sure that I applied the correct ISO patch steps and it was successful. Now we need to actually configure Dolphin. This is pretty straightforward. All you really need to do is go into Dolphin, File, Open User Folder, and now back in our Downloads, go to the Dolphin folder, and the Dolphin configuration, which is required, open it and grab these two files, copy or cut, and paste them in here. This way it's in the folder of your Dolphin User Folder. We're including it into there. This will automatically configure the codes and the required 64M setting. So if you see this under the Gecko Codes tab, that means it's successful, and you can customize these as you wish. Go to Config, Enable Cheats, Graphics, choose the proper GPU for your computer, it might be automatic. We need to set the aspect ratio to something other than Auto, so in this case I'm going to try 16x9. You can change the enhancements here if you wish, I personally run 1080p. And we want to enable custom textures, prefetch, and graphics mods. This step is technically optional, and I'm going to show FPS just for convenience. And at this point, I should be good to run the game. If you want to apply the 100% save file in Dolphin, you can take this 100% save folder optional, go inside of it, grab this GC folder and say copy or cut, go back to Dolphin, File, User Folder, and you're going to paste in this folder. And just to be clear about this, just like the other step, you're not pasting any of the folders in here, you're pasting in this folder itself. So you need to click in a blank space and then say paste. So you can see you just went in here. If it tells you, do you want to override, say yes, just be aware. That means you had a GameCube save for Shadow the Hedgehog and you're overriding. And if you see this screen, it looks like everything's working. I'm going to go ahead and press X to skip to select mode. And then I'm going to back out of this just to make sure I see the expected title screen. So, yep, that's looking good. If we want at this point, we can choose which characters we want to be. So I'm just going to change to a different Android just for the heck of it. And I'll make player two this shadow. Why not? And you back out of this. And you can either start story mode, expert mode, or just pick a stage. Uh, I recommend going to Glyphic Canyon, leaving one player at the start and the other player go to the area where Knuckles is. 
on the other side. So you can see my FPS is actually dropping down all the way into the 20s here, and it's going to be climbing up a little bit as I sit around. So to fix this, we go to Config, Advanced, and we need to turn on Enable Emulated CPU Clock Override. And depending on your CPU, you need to just figure out what value works best for you. And I'm just going to tweak it here. Um, for this computer, I think it's best around 250. And I'm getting a stable 60 FPS, not hearing any audio crackles. Looks like that's going to work. Keep in mind, if you're going to use the same instance of Dolphin to play other games, you definitely want to turn this off, otherwise it can break your games. An optional thing I didn't actually do is you need to go to right-click properties, go to the graphic mods, and you can turn on this native resolution bloom if you want, just to get better looking bloom if you don't want to tweak it otherwise. If you plan to play on Dolphin, you are done! So now we're going to go over Nintendo. So really the only thing you need to be aware of is you might need Code Manager 2, which is linked on the README. I'm going to go ahead and grab it. Just calling this out, obviously, if you're going to play on console, you need to make sure you've used the patches that were in the console compatible, this for widescreen or this for the original aspect ratio. I, then in the Nintendo folder here, I have this root of USB or SD just for convenience. You can just grab that and paste that on your Nintendo USB or SD card. This has the format that you need to set up. It has the 100% save file, so if you don't want that, you can delete this or just delete that saves folder. And in here, this already has the vertical split screen with the widescreen GCT preset here. But if you don't need that for some reason, or you want to play with horizontal widescreen in this pre-created GCTs, here's the horizontal one, here's original, here's widescreen, same for vertical. And whenever you grab one of these, say you want this one, uh, I did widescreen, so I'm going to grab this. You just need to make sure that it's renamed to the same name as this. Delete that one, and this will now be loop8p.gct. Looks good. And back to our patched game, you need to move this to your USB or your SD card and call it game.iso. And if you're familiar with Nintendo, you should already know this. So that's how Nintendo detects games. All right, so that's going. If for some reason you're not satisfied with the selection of the cheats, you can go and use the code manager thing we just downloaded. So I'm going to go open that now. Extract it. All right, now you can say yes or no to this. I'm going to say no because it doesn't really matter. I'm going to say import code list. And we go into our two-player Shadow the Hedgehog version 2.4, Nintendo, Gecko Codes, and this file right here. I'm going to ignore that again. Uh, you can go ahead and download it if it keeps annoying you when it pops up. And here's where we can actually tweak the codes. Uh, an annoyance with this program is if you click any of these, it'll reset the selection. So you got to make sure you click the checkboxes themselves. Otherwise, you'll lose the preset selection here. So just in case you want to say, I don't know, you want to target each other, you could turn that on and turn this off. You could turn on the invuln recovery adjustment to make it a little bit harder. You could turn on partners can homing attack each other. And maybe you want to do some of the reloaded tweaks here. So maybe you like reloaded's bloom. Or you want to be able to skip cutscenes. You don't like the little partner intro when you, you know, when you meet Sonic and stuff, you could turn that on here. Um, yeah, that's pretty much straightforward. And if you're going to make a non-widescreen version of this variant, make sure you turn off whatever the widescreen says here. But you also probably want to turn off the show score and points, because otherwise you won't have much room to see what's going on. That's pretty much it for suggestions. And uh, just a quick reminder, I recommend not changing any of these. This is like in-development stuff, and I want you to play with this as it's set here just to have the best experience. Once you've made your selection, you go ahead and click Export List down here, and it'll say goopap.gct, and you go ahead and just put that on your Nintendo. So I'm going to throw that in here and override it. So boom. And that's it for Nintendo. You just put that in your USB, and this version of the mod, you can use the default Nintendo. It should work just fine. Have fun, and see you soon.